Good afternoon everybody and uh, today me and Matthew we're speaking about a big topic spinning off from our last conversation of families and the topic today is marriage so Matthew marriage mm -hmm. a union between two people matrimony wedlock all those words that we talk about when we, two people get together start courting that's the official word I think um, dating in more modern society and then from there deciding to do life together officially sort of mm -hmm. and take it from there yeah what do we say about marriage where do we start Okay, well, what do we say about marriage or what do millennials in general say about marriage? Mm. Uh, because those aren't necessarily the same thing. Yeah. So if we look at the statistics, which I spent some time doing recently because I don't have any hobbies, um, the rates of marriage has been falling for a couple of years now. Um, it seemed to have peaked. Uh, a couple generations ago and has been in a bit of a decline for the last couple decades. Um, at the same time, the rates of divorce have been uh, plummeting. So there's been a very interesting uh, correlation that's been happening with a lot of the statistics. A lot of the statistics. I always stumble over that word. Um, so the reason why, there's a couple things. So what we've noticed is people our age now we're not getting married as much as the generations before. We, get, we are getting married later than the generations before as well. Uh, the rates of divorce seem to have dropped, but that could simply be because there are less marriages going around to split up now. Um, so there's several things that's happening now. People are having kids later, if they are even having kids. Uh, what are, what's happening a lot is people are simply cohabiting. They're not getting married, but they're staying in long-term relationships, living together, but just without ever making it an official marriage. So that's been increasing quite drastically as well. What we're also getting now, which we didn't get before, is same-sex marriage. That's also becoming a thing. So there's several things that are happening at the same time here that we need to all take into account. Um, millennials as we stand why are we getting married later or why are we not getting married at all what what do you say yes i think that is the big question surrounding if you look at the statistics like you said is um obviously if there's a correlation between less divorce and less marriage um or weddings taking place rather uh, and the, then the obvious question is, why are people not getting married? But you see people living together all the time um, and couples have children even though they're not married. The why question I think is, for me, in my opinion, when people look at marriages, um, young people looking at current marriages, older people, generations that has, that has gone and done it all, got married, got divorced, maybe got married again, maybe even got divorced again, saw the whole thing unravel and then decided this is not for me. I don't want to go through this. It's a lot of paperwork in the first place to get your IDs and this and then officiating a wedding. It costs so much to have a wedding and then maybe a couple of years later we decide we can't do this, um, the relationship is not working. Now all of that money has been spent mm -hmm. on a wedding and mm -hmm. you've put family and friends through this whole motion and now you're splitting up. Or you started a family maybe and um, what happens to that family now now that you're splitting up. So all of those questions come up before the time mm -hmm. and people are saying, well, let's give this a trial run. Let's live together, mm -hmm. see what happens and if this works, if, if we can cohabit Cohabit. 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 That's mm -hmm. the right word. Um, then, and, and it works, and we see, okay, I like this quirkiness. I can deal with this. I can't deal with it. Mm -hmm. Then let's get married. All right. Well, yeah, again, looking at the statistics, the divorce rate seemed to peak 
in the 90s, early 90s, which is when um, our oldest millennials were um, like, you know, just entering into puberty, just entering into uh, adolescence. Mm -hmm. And our youngest, uh, youngest millennials were just then being born. So if that was when the highest rate of divorce was basically, that's when it would have had the most impact on children. Uh, on us as millennials. So we would have seen the most divorce. I mean, I remember at the time, half of my classroom came from divorced parents. Uh, I was incredibly lucky to have come from a whole home. I was one of the, one of a few. So yeah, it's we would have all seen divorce. Uh, marriage would have been stamped by divorce. And besides that, we're watching the world become increasingly secular as well. And marriage even today, even with an increased secular world, marriage is still predominantly performed, or wedding ceremonies are still predominantly performed in a church. Uh, I think the statistics still say something like 60, 63% of all weddings are still performed as religious ceremonies. Not necessarily Christian, but religious. Um, and only like 40%, uh, 37 odd percent are civil, civil marriages. So. It is still predominantly a religious thing and in our increasingly secular world I think fewer and fewer people are seeing a need for for marriage. So from a Christian perspective marriage is still incredibly important because we see it as the as the metaphor or the symbol of the church's relationship with Christ. Uh, the church is the bride of Christ. And we see that in the marriage as well, uh, the union of man and wife um, coming together, wholeness and all of the, the symbolism that's wrapped up in it. But for someone who uh, for someone who doesn't really care about religion or about any of that stuff, uh, marriage just probably doesn't seem that important anymore. Um, and for those to whom it is still important, they've unfortunately seen it colored with this terrible blemish of divorce um, for years before. And, and there are still those of us who, I mean, we're both sitting here, we're both married. Uh, those of us that do actually decide to get married, we're watching it happen much, much later. Uh, I actually came across a meme a little while ago. Uh, this is now uh, your stereotypical uh, conservative Christian uh, young, young person. Um, and it basically says, boy, uh, those last five years of high school were tough. Time to settle down and relax with some marriage now. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Marriage has often been portrayed um, as this, you know, utopia where everything happy happens to you. And I think we both know that it's not. It's, and yeah. that comes from movies and yes. TV shows and things and, and Instagram photos, social media, you know, people post their happy pictures up and you see all of the this beautiful things and the happy ever after type of movies, you know, mm. romantic sites. But mm. the, uh, coming back to the Christian point of view, you know, that walking out the journey with somebody from the day you say I do and I want to do this with you mm. and whatever comes before us we're going to take this on together mm. um, and that part is not necessarily explained yeah but like you say with the divorce rates in the early 90s all of these young kids back then that mm. you say has been through seeing their parents getting divorced, having that trauma and seeing that pain that goes along mm. with it. To say, is it possible to walk a journey out with one person? Mm. And and especially if there's abuse, yeah. especially if there are things that is not okay. How do we look at it as Christians from a perspective saying that I want to walk this journey with you, but mm. there are just some things that's just not okay yeah. and I cannot do it. Um, and if I do, I'm hurting myself and I'm hurting the people around me because of the person I'm becoming mm. being in this marriage. Yeah. Um, so there's so many dynamics to look at, you mm. know. Um, and I think a lot of people are scared yeah. of saying I do and having a vow um, in front of God in a church ceremony or a religious ceremony of, of some sorts and then 
somewhere along the line saying, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Having that guilt and th- feeling, I'm breaking this vow now. What now? Heaven forbid you fail in front of everybody you know and love. Yes. Yeah. Typical human behavior. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, so that's just like a marriage in a nutshell, basically, that um, unfortunately our generation has by and large become disillusioned with the entire thing. Uh, but those of us who have decided to still give it a shot, we tend to do it much later for one reason or another. Maybe one, because we become incredibly picky. Uh, maybe two, because good heavens, the economy being what it is, we just can't afford it uh, because it is a, a big undertaking. And also maybe just because, as you say, we're scared. Um, it's a, it is a big weighty, weighty institution and it's a weighty decision and you don't it's not something you want to just rush into you don't want to make this decision when you're super young and i mean back in the day it was everybody got married in their early 20s Mm. and maybe that's partly why the divorce rate was so high a couple years later would you say that the um, previous generations walked blindly into marriage not thinking of what it's really about because it is the very next thing to do you know the logical next step in any relationship when you get out of school you get married get the house Mm. white picket fence kind of thing but now generations start to think for themselves and having their Mm. own identities and Mm. say that's not what I want for my life this is what I want and I'm not sure if marriage is part of it Um, I don't Mm. want to have these complications in my life you know, that's partly, I think that's partly why there's all of this conflict between the quote unquote millennials and boomers, mm-hmm. uh, between the older generations and our generation, because we are the generation who we grew up in the 90s. The 90s were dominated by, um, by this re- rebellious, uh, this rebellious idea that I can be an individual. Um, this idea that, yeah, I. I as a person can make my own decisions. Uh, we all grew up with that. And now we're seeing it really play out now that we're all adults. Uh, the idea that I want to do what I want to do. Uh, the 90s was basically the end of the era that went before that of the nuclear family. Uh, it was the end of the era of a, a woman's role and responsibility was to be a homekeeper. A man's responsibility was to go out and be the breadwinner and the children's responsibility was to be seen and not heard. Mm. It was the end of all of that. Um, and we're now living with the shattered pieces of it, I suppose. And we're basically just trying to figure out what it all means. Mm. I, I think it, it, got built, it, it got built up into something twisted. It used to be the, the family used to be something beautiful, but as with all things, it, it got old and it got stagnant. Mm. And the structure became more important than the individual parts. Uh, and it inevitably collapsed. So now we're basically trying to figure that out. And now, now that's why we have all of these movements, feminism and um, equal rights parties and Black Lives Matters and everything that we have today. Um, it's being built and it is being built it's it's not us just swimming around in the broken shards it's something that's being built on the foundations of what used to be there so uh, there's basically an old picture that we have a bigger picture of what married life used to be Um, it's a more simplistic life or that's how we see it um, that's how the older generations basically painted the picture yeah. for us and now we have all of these complexities in life that mm. sort of like you say you know women don't stay at home anymore mm. because of various reasons because <clears throat> they have women now can go and work mm. have a big salary because either they want to or because they have to yeah. um, because of the economy um, same with men. Some men like to stay at home, mm. want to be the same at yeah. home dad, where they don't necessarily want to do the rat race and mm. become a big boss and big shot somewhere. Uh, so there's so many dynamics and things that we can play out and every marriage is so different. Yeah. 
uh, or every um, relationship for that matter is so different. So having that conversation with a, with a partner saying that it, what is it that we want from each other? What do we need from each other? How do we see our lives planning or panning out mm. in the future? Mm. And can our two worlds of the two individual members in this relationship actually move forward together? Mm. And are we, can we accept the different stuff in our life? Mm. Because we all have baggage and we all have future plans, dreams and choices that we need to make. Putting those two things together and walking the road together. Do we want to make it official or do we just run with it and yeah, see where it goes? See where it goes, yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's something that needs to be left up to the individual watching this because we've run out of time. Yeah. Already. But before we before mm-hmm. we come to the end, we need to look at the beauty of marriage too. Because mm-hmm. we've painted a very beautiful <laughs> here. So there is beauty in it, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the, the beauty, I would say, is you get to know someone so deeply and there's trust that can build mm. up and that other relationships not necessarily have. Um, mm. Not saying that the fact that you go and have a ceremony, um, all of a sudden now you have a deeper relationship. It's not true. Mm. But the fact that you long term walk with somebody, walk through challenges, the one picks up the other one. Yeah. There is something mm. uh, precious about that, isn't mm. it? Absolutely, yeah, no, definitely. Um, well, what's that? That is a classic verse in uh, Ecclesiastes uh, a three braided cord is not easily broken, two are better than one. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, have, going life on your own is difficult. It's what we were talking about last week with the family. Yeah. Uh, remember, the nuclear family is the, the, the smallest viable option of a social structure. Uh, so just a couple, even if you don't have kids, just having a, being part of a couple. Yeah, it helps. It brings so many challenges, obviously, because now you've got to basically expand your entire life to include this other person. But by doing that, it brings so much variety to life. Um, so yeah, but I mean, I think where millennials, where people our age, and indeed the generation, the next generation as well, where their questioning now is, why do I need to be married to have that? Mm-hmm. And that I think is the real question that needs to be grappled with, yeah. uh, and which a lot of churches need to start seriously thinking about. Yes, because, but there's not necessarily answers to these questions, mm-hmm. but it's definitely something that we can talk through and see different perspectives mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. And so, when, we, when we start our podcast, we'll spend a couple of hours talking about all of that. I think so. <laughs> but on that note, if you have any questions or opinions or anything that you would like to share with us, please do. We will supply an email address and telephone number if you want to get in contact with us. And please talk to us about this. You know, what are your thoughts? Tell us what you think about marriage or uh, being single or just being a part of a relationship and walking it out. Let us know what you think. Bye. Bye.